Middle Tennessee's only prime time news. This is Fox 17 News at 9, your code red station. New tonight, putting someone in charge of all this, not only construction at the new Nissan Stadium for the Titans, but the development of the hundreds of acres of property around the stadium. Well, some state and city leaders are pushing for a development authority to oversee the project. Fox 17 News' Caitlin Miller joining us live at the Metro Courthouse, digging into why this board is needed. Caitlin. Yes, well, several city and state leaders say that this is a great opportunity to strengthen the relationship between the state and city on such a major long term development, especially after years of tension between the two. This is what the new and improved East Bank neighborhood will look like. But in order to make this happen, a Senate bill would create an East Bank Development Authority to promote economic development and generate high quality jobs in the East Bank and surrounding areas. Why do you think the state needs to be involved in a project like this? It was, in a lot of ways, a financial deal that started around the stadium. Senator Heidi Campbell says it started when the state issued bonds for this deal. And now she says it's important to have this relationship for consistency throughout different administrations on both the state and city levels. Have an authority that can kind of oversee the development, oversee the progress, um, and not necessarily be kind of a mayor to mayor project, but a, a separate authority that is overseeing the success of this development. This bill gives the General Assembly the power to choose the 10 members. But Coopin says Metro Council still has the final say. The Metro Council would have to vote and approve the same legislation and same setup for this committee or this authority rather as the state for it to even take effect. Mayor Freddie O'Connell says Nashville has several examples of utilizing an authority on large scale development projects like this one, including the airport, Bridgestone Arena and Nissan Stadium. Also really focusing on Nashvilleians and affordable housing and making sure that this is a livable space for the people who, who are from Nashville. Making Nashville a better place for Nashvilleians. Now, tomorrow is the first reading for the East Bank Development Agreement. Now, Metro Councilman Jacob Coopin says that this is very exciting because they're expecting this to pass. And then he says that they can move forward with the documents and changes. Reporting live from downtown, I'm Caitlin Miller, Fox 17 News, your Code Red Station. Caitlin, thank you. Continuing our coverage on that East Bank development now, this is essentially what developers have in mind uh, on a smaller scale to give you an idea of exactly what things are. This area in white right here, that is the roof on the new and improved Nissan stadiums. The buildings that are in purple right here, they look like hotels and that's exactly what they are. The ones in yellow like this are apartment uh, complex space, maybe some of that low income housing that State Senator Heidi Campbell was talking about. And at the bottom of your screen right here, the state has committed some $200 million for the new Tennessee Performing Arts Center. Is it possible that this will need to wait until next year before a compromise can be reached? Tonight in Crisis in the Classroom, Wilson County School Board pushing back against the controversial school choice plan moving through Tennessee's House and Senate. Fox 17 News Kylie Walker at the state capitol with what the governor has to say about the criticism. There are several different versions of this bill, but essentially it gives parents the choice to send their children to private schools using taxpayer dollars. In a rare unanimous vote, Wilson County School Board members supported a resolution in objection to the Education Freedom Scholarship. And Carrie Pfeiffer, vice chair of the Wilson County School Board, tells Fox 17 News that everyone had their concerns. I think it says a lot about uh, how strongly our board and our community feels that we did vote unanimously. And in a press conference Wednesday morning, Governor Bill Lee responded to the strong disapproval. We need to invest in kids. What matters is kids and their future. Uh, the education uh, scholarship, freedom scholarships are designed to create opportunity for children. Governor Lee went on to say that we need to strengthen all schools, whether public, private, or home schools. We can have the best public school systems in the country, and we can have more choices for parents, and that's what education freedom is about. He's absolutely right that we want the state to invest in our children, 
to invest in the education of our children. I think that the problem is that it should be the taxpayers who are investing in the private schools. Fiverr says a big concern for her and her constituents is fiscal responsibility. It's going to you know, really burden our district to educate students that potentially are coming from elsewhere. And that is something and, and whose families are not contributing to uh, the property taxes that fund our schools at the local level. Pfeiffer feels the plan is being steamrolled through. So I think Wilson County is just atypical of a lot of counties across the state that have said that. So I think they're, they're, they're wise to have sent that petition in. J.C. Bowman, the CEO of the Professional Educators of Tennessee, says he would have liked to sit down with the governor to discuss these plans. And as I mentioned, there are three different versions of this bill, the governor's version and then House and Senate. Now keep in mind, it did pass through Senate committee on Wednesday evening in Nashville. Kylie Walker, Fox 17 News, your Code Red Station. Crisis in the classroom is Fox 17 News commitment to exposing problems in our schools and finding solutions. If you have a story you think we should cover, send us an email to news at fox17.com. You can also call our tip line at 615-266-4149. God was just had control of my hands at that time. Operation Crime and Justice jurors hearing the very first testimony today in the Daniel Riley trial up in St. Louis. He's the man police there say caused the crash that ended with Smyrna High School volleyball star Janae Edmondson losing both of her legs and nearly dying. Fox 17 News Amanda Chen recapping today's testimony, including a riveting account of what happened from Janae Edmondson's father. It was an emotional and heartbreaking testimony from James Edmondson, who was right there when a car pinned his daughter in St. Louis. James described the moment doctors told him he saved his daughter's life with his quick and swift actions. Police believe 21-year-old Daniel Riley was driving 20 miles per hour above the speed limit when the crash happened after running a yield sign at an intersection and hitting another vehicle. Officers charged Riley with three counts of assault, armed criminal action, and operating a car without a valid license. The defense argues another car hit Riley and T-boned him, and he was incapable of controlling his car from that point forward. The defense also claims Riley did not know anyone was hurt for quite a while because he didn't know what happened. There was a yield sign. He went through the yield sign and out of the blue, he got hit. He didn't know that car was there. He didn't want to wreck an Audi. Prosecutors point to Riley's toxicology reports, which show he tested positive for fentanyl and codeine. But the mood changed when Janae's father took the stand, describing the pivotal moment he used a belt as a tourniquet to stop Janae's bleeding as much as he could. James Edmondson says he immediately went from father mode to military mode. And when I looked down and saw her leg was severed and, and I knew she only had seconds and not minutes, uh, my mind just kind of blocked everything out. And it was like God was just had control of my hands at that time. James also recalls the moment he and his wife went to see Janae before she went into surgery to amputate her legs, not knowing what would happen. And my wife and I wanted to just say we loved her because we thought that was going to be the last time we see her. And she said that, uh, and then uh, we was, uh, Francine was on one side of the, uh, the bed and I was on the other side of the bed. And I said, Janae, if you can hear me, we love you. We're here for you. And if you can hear me, squeeze my hand. And she did. And that gave us hope. Now the trial will continue for the next few days. And we are expected to hear from Janae's mother and Janae herself. Reporting in the studio, I'm Amanda Chin, Fox 17 News, your Code Red Station. An update tonight on a Midtown bouncer facing charges after a customer ended up in the hospital. Tonight, Fox 17 News confirmed that the state suspended Richard Cornelius's license to work security. Cornelius now facing assault charges after police say that he hit Austin Turner, causing him to fall. Police say Turner tried to get back inside the tin roof bar, leading to a fight.
New tonight, state lawmakers are considering a bill that would keep people from bringing their pets into restaurants by calling them service animals. This measure essentially says if your animal isn't trained or being trained to perform a task for a person with a disability, it cannot be brought into the inside portion of a restaurant. Bill sponsor says some people are bringing pets indoors and allowing them to eat right off of their plates. This bill has passed both the House and Senate, now on its way to the governor's desk. Next year, state lawmakers say they plan to target pets in grocery stores. Well, we want to know what you think. Should untrained service animals be allowed in restaurants here in Tennessee? 360 votes have come in. 85.3% of respondents say no. 14.7% say yes. We'd love for you to weigh in and get your thoughts. You can cast your vote right now. This poll is live. Just scan the QR code there on your screen. It will Take you over to our X page and then we'll show you updated poll results here tonight in our 10 o'clock newscast. And we're going to start things out tonight with a live look at this Broadway camera. A nice shot right there on the Broadway camera. A little bit of a crowd out there on this Wednesday night. Still cloudy. No rain on that camera, though. We had the showers move through earlier today. Those cleared on out of here. 56. That's our current temperature in Nashville. And uh, as far as radar goes, showing any rainfall, really not anywhere too close to us anymore. That that moved through has now moved off well to the east. And we're going to keep it dry as we head through the rest of tonight. But we could see a little bit of patchy fog develop. Southern Kentucky, Middle Tennessee, though, all dry right now. Temperatures ranging from the low to upper 50s, depending on where you're at. It's going to be a mild night for us tonight. Again, patchy fog possible tonight. We'll go into a little bit more detail in that here in just a minute. More rain is on the way. That's going to arrive by the later part of the week into the weekend. We'll talk about how much you might pick up in just a bit. Imagine you get a TV delivered to your front door. You get the picture that it's there. Within seconds, you're at the front door and it's... Not one based on whatever this person is doing. Get a rate based on you with DriveWise and the Allstate app. Tonight, Fox 17 News investigates the case of a stolen TV in Wilson County. After receiving a notification that workers delivered her brand new TV, a Wilson County woman says it was stolen all in a matter of minutes. As Fox 17 News Dennis Farrier shows us, this is not, uh, however, your normal case of porch pirates. Christina Shear was so excited to get her new TV. She had been thinking about buying it for more than a year. But when it finally came, it vanished in thin air. But then they looked at their doorbell camera and a very different story emerged. The Walmart delivery people took a nice picture of Christina Shearer's new TV placed perfectly on the front porch. She was actually in the house. She got to the front door just minutes after the delivery. And I was like, oh my God, no, 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 no. And I get up and I'm walking around storming and like I open the door and I go outside and there's nothing. And I'm like, okay, well maybe, maybe we put it on the side of the house. So I'm running down there looking on the side of the house, nothing. And I was like, Oh my God. And I'm just, I'm walking back up to the house and I'm like, what happened? Porch pirate, she told her boyfriend and then lost it. And I went into my room and I just boohoo cried because I was like, why would this happen to me? Like, what did I do to deserve this? I was like, I've literally been trying to buy this TV for like a year and a half. But wait a minute. Christina had a doorbell camera. Her and her boyfriend started reviewing video and oh my goodness, could it be true? You see the delivery men bringing the TV up to the porch. The next video shows them taking the TV back to the truck. Notice how far away they parked, way down the street, not in front of the house. She called the Wilson County Sheriff's Department who came over and watched the video with them. Uh, I think the delivery person took it. And so the sheriff looked at the same videos and he was like, that's what it's looking like. And I was just like, oh great, <laughs> wonderful. So, and it was just like, it happened so fast, so fast. And I was just like, <sighs> what now? So she called Walmart, who subcontracts deliveries with a company called Rody. Walmart actually got the delivery driver on the phone. All of a sudden, Christina is talking to the man she thinks stole her TV. And you're not going to believe what he told her. Why are you being such an ungrateful or something like that? And I flipped out. I was like, what? 
I was like, you just stole my TV. I'm not being ungrateful. I want the product that I ordered. Here's where it gets crazier. Christina says Walmart told her they are not responsible for theft. So basically, Walmart's like, we're done. We're washing, you got your stuff. Like, that's not our problem. So I was just like, what am I supposed to do with that? We also contacted Walmart to see if that is truly policy. Is Walmart saying it is not responsible for the subcontractors it hires? At the same time, subcontractor Rody says it's open an investigation. And the Wilson County Sheriff's Office is pursuing theft charges through multiple subpoenas. What did Walmart tell us? Nothing. They did not answer our email. You would think that a billion dollar company has insurance for these purposes like not everybody is honest we're looking into the law in tennessee what about subcontractors one lawyer told me walmart would not be responsible until the delivery driver is convicted of the theft right now it is just an unsolved theft for now i'm dennis ferrier fox 17 news your code red station well, it was a little bit cloudy for us today. Temperatures a little bit above normal. Not too much, though. Typical high temperature for this time of year. We're in the upper 50s. Today, though, we were in the lower 60s. 62, that was the high that we hit earlier this afternoon at the Nashville Airport. There's your live look over Broadway. Overall, a pretty quiet night as far as the weather goes. A little bit of activity going on on Broadway tonight. 56 degrees right here in Nashville. Still a little bit cloudy, too. Those clouds will stick around with us as we head through the rest of the night. As far as any rainfall goes, really not seeing any of that right now, at least. Earlier today, we had some showers move through. We didn't have to deal with that for a super long time. Those did move out fairly quickly. It is all dry right now. The bulk of that rainfall has now moved out to the east of here, and it is dry here in southern Kentucky, also into parts of, or really all of Middle Tennessee. That's how we're going to stay for the rest of the night, too. Not expecting any rain chance. We could see a little bit of patchy fog develop. As far as any rain goes, though, I think we keep it all dry. This is Thursday morning, tomorrow morning, 7 o'clock. We're off to a dry start tomorrow morning. We'll stay dry through the rest of the day tomorrow. Then by Friday, that's when things start to change up for us. This is Friday morning, 7 o'clock. Some showers trying to move into the northern portions of the viewing area. More activity, though. More rainfall moves in from the south as we head on into Friday afternoon. By noon Friday, most of the activity should be south of Interstate 40, but that's going to push up north of there. This is 5 o'clock clock Friday afternoon. The rainfall gets more widespread for us and it's going to continue as we head on through the rest of Friday night into Saturday morning before it clears on out of here by about six o'clock or so on Saturday morning. And then there's still a little bit more activity that's possible as we head through the rest of the day on Saturday. I had to change models to take it out a little bit longer range. This is seven o'clock Saturday. So this model still trying to show some showers holding together, but I think by about midday or so that rain should be pushing out of our viewing area. And then behind that front, that's going to leave us with drier conditions as we head through the rest of Saturday, Saturday night on into Sunday, and we're going to keep it dry for Monday and Tuesday as well. The good news right now is that the severe weather threat should be staying to the west and south of us. I don't really think we're going to have to worry about much of a severe weather threat, and we could see some regular old thunderstorms. I think the best chance for that is going to be Friday night and the Saturday morning. Right now, though, again, the severe weather threat is going to stay to the southwest of us. I'll have more details coming up for you and show you that uh, seven day here in a little bit. Get in and get away now before these deals are gone. Lease an Elantra for $179 a month or get 4.49% APR for 60 months or 1,000 bonus cash. Hurry, offers end soon. Stage is set for President Biden's State of the Union address tomorrow with the presidential race expected to be front and center. Fox 17 News' Christine Frizzow has a preview. A prevailing goal for President Joe Biden will likely be instilling hope at a time his critics are working overtime to paint a different picture of life with him in the White House. If you had to describe in one word what you believe the State of the Union is, um, you've heard the word crisis, you've heard catastrophe, I think maybe a summary is decline. With polls showing immigration now the top issue for many voters, President Biden just visited the border and blamed Republicans for not passing legislation that could have helped. It's time for the speakers and some of my Republican friends in Congress who are blocking this bill to show a little spine. Republicans countering that message. They want open borders, and open borders are going to destroy our country. A recent NBC News poll laid out Biden's vulnerabilities, with Trump leading by 35 points on securing the border. 
21 on crime, 22 on the economy, and 23 regarding mental and physical health. Age is one issue Biden seems to be talking about. You got to take a look at the other guy. He's about as old as I am, but he can't remember his wife's name. Yeah. And, uh... On the economy, President Biden had hoped his message on Bidenomics would land, especially considering inflation is way down. Americans' wages are up, with an economy that's added 13 million jobs. Instead, this message from Republicans seems to be more pervasive. It was Joe Biden's runaway spending that led to double-digit inflation, historic interest rates, and bank collapses. Biden also expected to lean in on a consistently winning message, reproductive rights, reminding voters Trump was responsible for overturning Roe v. Wade. How far will he go? When will he stop? You know the answer. He won't. We'll also be watching to see how President Biden addresses Israel's war with Hamas, his previous support for Israel, prompting hundreds of thousands of people to vote uncommitted in recent primary races. While they largely would not be expected to vote for Donald Trump, many have threatened to stay home in November. In Washington, I'm Christine Frizzau. Well, Fox 17 will be airing the president's State of the Union address live tomorrow evening beginning at 8. Not in my backyard, the push to kill a growing TVA gas plant. And the great migrant debate. Shop online or at all Electronic Express locations. This Fox 17 newscast is sponsored by B.F. Myers Furniture. In politics tonight, state lawmakers advancing a bill to force police and sheriff's departments across the state to notify the feds when they arrest someone in the country illegally. Now, this is a controversial measure to be sure, and it's getting pushback from lawmakers both in Nashville and Memphis. Right now, law enforcement agencies in Tennessee have discretion when reporting a suspect's immigration status to Homeland Security. For instance, Knoxville reports to the feds, but Nashville does not by order of the mayor. This bill would remove that discretion. This bill will clarify that all law enforcement, and that means all law enforcement, including sheriff's departments, police departments, are required to fully cooperate and to communicate with the Department of Homeland Security. The bill sailed through the House Government Committee Wednesday with members of the Republican majority behind it, but not without spirited pushback on several different fronts. These laws are what welcome Nazis marching in downtown Nashville chanting, save the white man, deport Mexicans. We've got enough problems. We don't need to be adding to local law enforcement, uh, immigration enforcement. Lawmakers in Memphis and Nashville are against this bill. One argument is that mandatory reporting will make illegal immigrants less willing to talk to police about crimes in which they're victims. How do you go about determining whether or not you think or law enforcement thinks somebody is legal or not legal? You just have to prove who you are, and if you can't prove who you are, there's a process by which they will uh, operate and those processes take place. As written, there is no penalty for not following the law other than the prospect of being hauled into court and ordered to comply. Now, this bill is sent for another committee vote in the State House tomorrow. The companion bill is scheduled for a vote in the State Senate next week. Continuing coverage tonight on the race for the White House and big news, Republican candidate Nikki Haley announcing today that she has dropped out of the presidential race, now leaving President Biden and former President Trump to earn their respective party's nomination and face off again. Political analyst Linda Shad joining us tonight with reaction. Uh, Linda, does this uh, completely change the landscape now moving forward? What is that going to look like? Well, I don't think it changes the landscape because former President Trump has been running as if he was his party's nominee uh, for several months now. Uh, if anything, it puts the focus on President Biden to really kick off his campaign tomorrow night when he does his State of the Union. Uh, if you think about it, President Trump didn't debate. He has had fewer rallies. He has assumed he was going to be the nominee of his party. And now we see Nikki Haley getting out but not endorsing him. But Mitch McConnell, the GOP leader who hasn't talked to him in over a year, endorsed him today. The Republicans 
are falling in line. We like to say Republicans fall in line, Democrats want to fall in love. And that's the problem President Biden has right now, and that is that the Democrats are not completely in love. Uh, he has an enthusiasm problem, and I expect that he's going to have trouble, but will keep trying to pull together the coalition that brought him to victory in 2020. What does this race look like for voters in the middle? We're seeing that in polls, Haley's votes are going in these polls, uh, about 60% to Biden, 30% to Trump, and 10% undecided. That's very early, right, to, to know whether or not those Republicans who uh, voted for Haley will eventually come home to the party. But there's another issue, and that is the third parties. And we may have another entrance into the third parties because the No Labels movement is holding their own convention this coming Friday to decide whether or not they will mount a third party ticket. All right, many months to go and a lot of things that can happen between now and November. We'll be checking in with you. Linda Shad every step of the way. Thanks so much. Thank you. New tonight, homeowners in two different mid-state counties are pushing for answers about how transmission lines to and from a proposed TVA gas plant near Ashland City would affect them. Tennessee Valley Authority hosting an open house today to talk one-on-one -on -one with close to 400 landowners in Cheatham and Robertson counties. They were lining up. Now, this group would be impacted by the construction of the transmission lines we mentioned and does not actually include the hundreds of other acres that would be impacted for the actual gas plant. Land. We won't take any homes. Uh, we don't enter into any transmission project with the expectation or assumption that we're going to have to use eminent domain. That's why we're here today presenting options and alternatives. This is simply one more destructive device for a tranquil, peaceful, non-industrialized agricultural residential community and it's fraught with government overreach. Well, as you hear, folks are not excited. The open house will continue tomorrow from noon until 7 at the Hampton Inn in Ashland City. Breaking news tonight on the plane crash off of I-40 Monday night. The Canadian family of five that perished in the crash has been identified. The pilot, 43-year-old Victor Dotsinko, his wife Rima Dotsinko, and their three children, David, Adam, and Emma, were all killed in the crash. Well, it was a cloudy day for us today here across Middle Tennessee and Southern Kentucky, and it's going to be more of the same tomorrow. We had the showers move through this morning. Tomorrow, though, I think we are dry, and then that rain chance it does increase. Tomorrow's temperature is not going to be bad, though. 68 degrees, the forecast high. Average high temperature this time of year is 60 degrees, so we are going to go above that. Cloudy skies, that will be the story for us for tomorrow. A good chance for rain a Friday into Saturday. Could see some thunderstorms Friday night into Saturday morning. The good news, though, no severe weather expected at this time. Temperatures are going to remain mainly above normal. The coolest day that we get, that's going to come on Sunday with high temperatures only in the mid-50s. Get a rate based on you with DriveWise and the Allstate app. Fox 17 News. Your cold red weather station. Titan star running back Derrick Henry will officially become a free agent next week, and the king is making sure that everyone knows he's not slowing down anytime soon. Here's what I mean by that. Henry, known for his impressive stiff arms and thousand yard seasons, is also known for his insane off season workouts. His trainer posting this video today on Instagram and seems like this is just another day in the gym for the 30 year old running back. Every single one of his exercises, some sort of dynamic movement and every single one of those also making me hurt just watching him. Now, when Henry hits the open market next week, he won't be the only running back looking for a new home. He will have to compete with a very crowded market and against some veteran talent as well, such as Saquon Barkley, Josh Jacobs, Austin Eckler, and several others looking for a new team. Tennessee men's basketball team with a chance to win the SEC regular season title tonight. Now, Vols haven't won it outright since 2008. All they have to do 
beat South Carolina and it's theirs. Not always an easy thing to do, especially since the Gamecocks beat the Vols back in January. First half, Vols up by five and star guard Dalton Kimmer. He'd have 14 points in the first half alone. Well, second half, Gamecocks trying to work their way back. Colin Murray Boyles backing his man down, finishes in outright. Vanderbilt Commodores at Rupp Arena tonight taking on 15th ranked Kentucky Wildcats. Vandy was able to beat the Wildcats two times last season. That's been a little tougher to do this year. Commodores trailed by five at the half. They're now down by 10 with roughly eight minutes to play in the game. Now, regardless of where Vandy finishes in the SEC standings, the doors will be in the SEC tournament next week, and that takes place right here in Nashville at Bridgestone Arena starting next Wednesday. Jill John Lick, Fox 17 Sports, your Code Red Station. Not seeing any rain right now, but rain is on the way for the end of the week. We'll talk about how much you might pick up coming up here in just a bit. TikTok's future in the United States now up in the air. I'm Atrell Deshaun in Capital. Durham Injury Law at 615-242-9000 for a free case evaluation. This Fox 17 This Morning newscast is sponsored by Electronic Express. We make it happen. New tonight, renewed questions about whether the popular TikTok app is a threat to this country's national security. And as Fox 17 News Atra El Nishar shows us, a bipartisan group of congressional lawmakers fast tracking a bill to ban the app in the U.S. And by the way, you can vote on this issue by scanning the QR code that will appear here shortly on your screen. We're eager to talk to you. It's a rare sight. Lawmakers from across the political spectrum standing side by side to fight against one of the most popular things in America, TikTok. This is not a step that Republicans and Democrats are taking lightly. TikTok is used by 56% of young adults, according to Pew Research. This week, the House Select Committee on the Chinese Communist Party is out with a bill to block TikTok in the U.S. unless it cuts ties with Beijing-based parent company ByteDance and any other entity controlled by the Chinese Communist Party. This man is the editor-in-chief of ByteDance and he is a CCP member. Chinese law requires companies in the country to comply with the CCP. Top U.S. national security officials have spent years warning lawmakers that China can take TikTok user data and use it for surveillance or manipulate algorithms to steer public opinion, all in an effort to weaken the United States. Those who have the best information uh, have the power. TikTok says this legislation will trample the First Amendment rights of 170 million Americans. A lot of everyday users aren't too happy. No one gives a about data security anymore. So you think TikTok users who love the app aren't totally concerned about their own data should care about this for a national security reason? Well, I mean, there's I think people think about data as this sort of esoteric blob, right? Like, oh, my data, I don't care, use my data. Well, wait a minute, how's the data being used? Members of Congress know that getting rid of TikTok is a political landmine, especially in an election year. That's why they're being really careful to emphasize that this bill is written in a way to not put an outright ban on TikTok. Instead, it puts the onus on ByteDance to divest or spin off TikTok so that it could still have a future in the United States. It's just a question of whether voters will see it that way. The app's popularity cannot be denied. Even the Biden campaign has embraced it, but the White House called the bill a welcome step to address a threat to national security. On Capitol Hill, I'm Atrell Najjar reporting. Well, during that story, we had a QR code posted on the screen linking up to this poll asking, do you think the federal government should ban TikTok? And here are the results. 61.3% say yes, 38.7% say no out of just about 250 votes. A cloudy day for us today, and that's how we're going to stay for tomorrow, too. The good news, though, not seeing any sort of rainfall right now. It is dry on the Broadway camera, so dry conditions for us right now, and that's exactly how we're going to stay for the rest of the night, too. Areas around the plateau could see a little bit of fog develop, but not expecting a whole, whole lot of that. Patchy fog, though, will be possible. 56 degrees, that's our current temperature right here in Nashville. As far as the radar map shows, not really showing any rainfall anywhere in Tennessee now. That has moved out to the east of us, so southern Kentucky, middle Tennessee, to see it is all dry. We're not really having to deal with any rainfall right now. For the rest of tonight, it's still dry. We're going to stay fairly cloudy too. Again, some of those lower clouds around the plateau. This is tomorrow afternoon. We are still dry tomorrow afternoon. Late tomorrow night in the very early Friday morning. That's going to be that first next best chance for some showers. This is 7 o'clock Friday morning. A few light showers north of I-40. 
Friday by noon, more of that starts to build in from the south. So areas south of Interstate 40 for the start of Friday afternoon, seeing a better chance for some rain. It just gets more widespread through the rest of the day Friday. This is 5 o'clock right here, and you'll see it's pushed up north of I-40 into southern Kentucky too. Those shades of yellow indicating some heavier rainfall in those areas. That's going to carry on over into Saturday morning too, but by about 6 o'clock or so, I think we'll at least be done with that round. A little bit more of this will move in on the back side of that from the west. I have to change over models here. This one takes it out a little bit further. Not high resolution though. This is 7 o'clock Saturday. Still a few more showers move in by noon. Most of this is lined up along into the east of Interstate 65 and then we dry out as we head through the middle part of Saturday on into Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, even in the Wednesday probably. We're going to keep those dry conditions in place. The good news though, that severe weather threat is going to stay to the southwest of here. There's that level one risk that covers portions of West Tennessee, but the bulk of that activity should stay to the southwest of us. As far as rainfall amounts go, most areas looking at about an inch or so, an inch and a half closer to the Alabama line. Our far southeastern counties, Lincoln, Moore, and Franklin County, if you're living down there. Uh, patchy fog is possible for us early tomorrow morning around the plateau. 68 the high, 70 for Friday, 63 on Saturday, the coolest day. That comes Sunday, mid 50s. Just ahead, igniting a passion for learning. The push to get Tennessee school children to read. Hey there, I'm Fox 17 News this morning anchor Erica Glover. Researchers say smoking rates are down, but they're concerned that cases of lung cancer are now on the rise. So, T Newscast is sponsored by Eurostone. This Fox 17 Newscast is sponsored by Bar Durham Injury Law. Someplace brighter without these hoops. What's a hoop? Owl. An owl. Has anybody ever heard of owl? We'll come in early reading to students today at Pleasant View Elementary School in Ashland City. Now his visit part of Read Across America Week and it's Literacy Month in Tennessee as well. The governor is partnering with the Early Literacy Foundation trying to get Tennessee school children to learn and love to read because if you can learn to read, well, you can learn just about anything. These young people are excited about the opportunity to learn and I'm grateful for the educators here. Uh, who are committing their lives to teaching them. Almost two thirds of fourth graders in the U.S. struggle to read at grade level, and that's why Fox 17 and our parent company, Sinclair Broadcasting, are partnering with Reading is Fundamental, RIF, to support children's literacy. Scan the QR code that you see at the bottom left hand side of your screen to donate to our virtual book drive. In your health news tonight, research suggesting that we make upwards of 35,000 decisions every single day, but we don't decide things alone. How nudge theory can be used to improve your health. From deciding what to wear to choosing what to eat, our brains are in constant decision mode, but we don't decide things on our own. You may not realize this, but there are invisible forces guiding those decisions. Chasing Life podcast host Dr. Sanjay Gupta says it's called nudge theory. He says the way options are laid out for us has a significant impact on the choices we make and these nudges are all around us. Just think about the Netflix autoplay option. Before you know it, you've watched five episodes. That's nudge theory. But experts say we can use nudges to help improve our health. One way is the power of defaults. It can be used to help us choose healthier food options. That may be as simple as putting fresh fruit on the counter for a snack while keeping the chips out of sight. The healthy snack becomes your default. Another way is something called temptation bundling. When you pair something you love with something you don't, it may help you opt for exercise. Getting ice cream? Yes. But going on a long walk to be able to get some instead of keeping it in the house, that's temptation bundling. Finally, Dr. Gupta says to give yourself an emergency reserve. It may help you stay on track for your health. Let's say your goal is to work out every day for a month, but you miss a day. That might make you feel like you failed and you give up. Instead, say you're allowed to miss some days, maybe even five days. Basically, figure out a way to cut yourself some slack. A very unique tribute how country great Eric Church is honoring fans at his... Whatever this person is doing, get a rate based on you with DriveWise and the Allstate app. 
Get this, country star Eric Church giving his fans the deed to a piece of his new bar, I should say, on Broadway downtown called the Chiefs, of course, his nickname. Fans will be able to get one of these deeds with an actual brick number that they can call their own. Well, Church says that fans helped him build his career brick by brick, and this is one of his ways of honoring their loyalty. He says the new Chiefs bar will feature an area for ticketed shows, a studio to broadcast his radio show, and more than 4,000 of his concert posters. Is it allergies or is it something else? I'm Liz Bonus. A new study on our sinuses could have you feeling better in no time. It is just ahead. This is Fox 17 News at 10, your code red station. We begin tonight with breaking news as we learn more about the victims of the deadly plane crash on Monday night beside I-40 in West Nashville. We knew the flight had originated in Canada. And now we know the names of the victims, all members of the same family. 43-year-old Victor Dotsinko, the pilot, along with his wife, Rima, and their three children, David, Adam, and Emma. Still no word on the cause of that crash. New tonight, appointing a dedicated board to oversee the development of the East Bank project around the new Titan Stadium. Well, city leaders are asking the state to create an East Bank Development Authority to keep this project on track and make sure it lives up to the original vision. Fox 17 News' Caitlin Miller joining us live from the Metro Courthouse after asking city and state leaders why they think it's needed. Yes, well, some leaders say that this started as a financial deal, but now they say it's good for both Nashville and the state to have a group overseeing this for long term consistency. Now, this is what the new East Bank neighborhood will look like, but in order to make this happen, a Senate bill would create an East Bank Development Authority to promote economic development and generate high quality jobs in the East Bank and surrounding areas. Both city and state leaders say this is a great opportunity to strengthen the city state relationship on a major development that's critical for the entire state. This comes after years of tension between the two. It's a bill that is meant to bring the state and the city of Nashville together in um, planning for the future of the East Bank project with an eye towards the future to make sure that, you know, as administrations change on both levels, we have some good um, security in place. We kind of need each other. We've got a symbiotic relationship. So having that, that connection, I think, is helpful um, as such a massive project moves forward. Mayor Freddie O'Connell says Nashville has several examples of utilizing an authority on large scared scale developments, including the airport, Bridgestone Arena and Nissan Stadium. Now that tomorrow is the first reading for the East Bank Development Agreement, Jacob Coupin says that this is expected to pass and then they can move forward with looking at documents and possible changes. Reporting live from downtown, I'm Caitlin Miller, Fox 17 News, your Code Red Station. Is it possible that this will need to wait until next year before a compromise can be reached? Tonight in crisis in the classroom, Tennessee governor responding to push back over his school choice plan. The Wilson County School Board says it does not approve of the idea of using taxpayer dollars to send kids to private school. We asked the governor, Billy, what he thinks of this criticism. The education uh, scholarship, freedom scholarships are designed to create opportunity for children and to create the ability for parents to have the greatest influence in where their kids go to school and what they learn. That's great. Um, and I do believe that all schools should be strong. All schools have room for improvement. But I don't believe as a taxpayer that I should be footing the bill for uh, strengthening private schools. Carrie Pfeiffer, who you heard from there, the vice chair of the Wilson County School Board, telling Fox 17 News she questions the fiscal responsibility of all three plans making their way through the legislature. 
Continuing coverage tonight on the search for Sebastian Rogers. A Sumner County 15 year old disappeared from his home near Beach High School 10 days ago with no new leads to follow. The sheriff's office suspended the around the clock search on Monday, but they are still working the case with every possibility being considered. Fox 17 News has been on top of the search for Sebastian Rogers since day one. To see our previous reporting, go to fox17.com and search Sebastian. Happening this week, it's Read Across America, which aims to celebrate and encourage literacy in our schools. Governor Billy helping to spread the importance of reading earlier. He made a stop at uh, Pleasant View Elementary School out in Ashland City. These young people are excited about the opportunity to learn, and I'm grateful for the educators here uh, who are committing their lives to teaching them. Read Across America Week, an initiative by the National Education Association, is the first week of March every year and kicks off National Reading Month. Almost two-thirds of fourth graders in the U.S. struggle to read at grade level. Fox 17 News partnering with Reading is Fundamental and our parent company Sinclair for Sinclair Cares, supporting children's literacy. You can scan the QR code there on your screen to donate to our virtual book drive. New tonight, a bill to keep the disposal of embryos from fertility treatments from being considered an abortion fails in our state legislature. Lawmakers say the term abortion does not apply to the results of fertility treatments or contraceptives in Tennessee. Democrats wanted that spelled out in the law to avoid any possible confusion. As we reported earlier, Alabama Supreme Court recently ruled that embryos are children, but state Republicans here worry that changing the wording could open the door for abortion. We have a bipartisan law on the books that we passed last year that protected both, it did not prohibit contraception and protected IVF. Those are discussions that we had uh, before we brought that bill last year. Earlier tonight, we had an ex poll about a new bill to ban service animals in Tennessee restaurants. We asked you what you thought about the plan, and here are the results. Out of three, almost 400 votes here, 85.8% .8 say no, it's a bad idea to let untrained service animals into Tennessee restaurants compared to 14.2% that support it. Thanks for voting, and tomorrow look for a brand new X poll. Today was a cloudy one, and tomorrow is just going to be more of the same for us. We had the showers move through this morning. Tomorrow, however, we are not going to get that rain for the morning hours. We will stay dry for the rest of tonight. Here's a live look over Broadway. Not seeing any sort of rainfall on that camera right there, but we could see a little bit of patchy fog develop in some areas. Otherwise, a very calm and quiet night for us. No bad weather or anything like that for us for tonight. 56 degrees, that's our current temperature right here in Nashville. Average high temperature for today is 59 degrees. So we're just now dropping a little bit below that radar not showing any rainfall right here in Tennessee. It is all dry for us in middle Tennessee. Also dry up into southern Kentucky as well. Current temperatures are in the low to mid 50s for most locations. 55 McMinnville, same for Murfreesboro, Lebanon, 54 in Gallatin, 53. That's where it's at in Dixon and uh, around that same temperature up there in Clarksville. So a little bit of patchy fog develops tonight. I'll show you where we see the best chance of that. Also talk about this rain chance that increases towards the end of the week on into the weekend. We'll talk about how much rain you might pick up in just a bit. A threat some bazinga tomorrow at 6 on Fox 17. This Fox 17 newscast is sponsored by Tennessee Home Buyers. In international news tonight, China preparing to spend a lot more money on its military. How much? As Fox News' Jennifer Griffin reports, the latest estimate represents a 7% year-to-year increase. At dawn Tuesday in the South China Sea near the second Thomas Shoal, a pair of Chinese warships surrounded and rammed two Philippine Coast Guard vessels. <laughs> escorting Philippine Navy personnel, resupplying an outpost that China has tried to claim as its own. The Chinese warships hit the vessels from the Philippines with water cannons, injuring four sailors. It's still illegal and irresponsible actions mm. ng, uh, ng China 
to illegally illegally uh, prevent us from uh, doing our routine mission. What makes this incident so dangerous is the U.S. by treaty is required to come to the Philippines' defense if war breaks out between it and China. China urges the U.S. not to use the Philippines as a pawn to disrupt the situation in the South China Sea, and the Philippines should not allow itself to be manipulated by the U.S. History shows us that a pawn will ultimately be a sacrifice. China says it will boost its $222 billion military budget by 7.2 percent this year. China's defense budget has more than doubled under President Xi Jinping. Compare that to the Pentagon budget for fiscal year 2024, $842 billion, a 3.2 percent increase from 2023. But Congress's failure to pass last year's budget means zero growth for the Pentagon budget because military spending has been frozen at the previous year's level, while China's defense spending gallops ahead. We do continue to call on them to be more transparent about their defense spending uh, and their um, actions that they're taking, not only in the in Indo-Pacific region, but around the world. Another flashpoint, a new Chinese government report states that Beijing has abandoned the idea of peaceful reunification with Taiwan, instead using harsher rhetoric, vowing to resolutely oppose any separatist activities aimed at Taiwan independence and external interference, a shot across the bow at the United States. At the Pentagon, Jennifer Griffin, Fox News. I'm Kayla Gaskins. Coming up, why a $20 million part of a public university's budget is sparking national conversations. And we are still dry. We'll be staying there. Weather alert. No, we're providing you with the information needed to prepare and stay safe. This Fox 17 newscast is sponsored by Xander Insurance. OpenAI is responding to Elon Musk's lawsuit alleging the artificial intelligence startup has been transformed into a subsidiary of Microsoft. OpenAI CEO Sam Altman claims Musk wanted to merge OpenAI with Tesla or wanted full control of the startup. The company says it intends to dismiss all of Musk's claims. The Mortgage Bankers Association's average for a 30-year fixed-rate mortgage moderated a little last week to 7.02%. Mortgage applications to purchase a home increased 11%. Refinancings also increased. And it was a bad day for Meta Chief Mark Zuckerberg, not only because there was a massive global outage of Facebook and Instagram Tuesday morning, but the fact Meta had to post on X the competition to let users know what was going on. Meta's Andy Stone posted that the company was working to fix the issues. Elon Musk immediately trolling Zuckerberg, writing, quote, If you're reading this post, it's because our servers are working. It's unclear what caused the login issues for users across Facebook, Insta, Threads, and Messenger. Down detectors showing a big spike in reports around 10 a.m. Eastern Time. That's business in New York. C.J. Papa, Fox News. New tonight, the amount of taxpayer dollars being used right now to fund diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives is sparking debates across the nation. And as Fox 17 News' Kayla Gaskins explained, some states are making efforts to eliminate the programs entirely. Controversial diversity, equity, and inclusion programs coming under intense scrutiny. The University of Virginia spending $20 million per year on the salaries and benefits of DEI-related employees. Information obtained through public records by the federal spending watchdog group opened the books. We were surprised at how deeply embedded the philosophy of diversity, equity, and inclusion is at the University of Virginia. Uh, it's embedded in everything that they do. UVA's global chief diversity officer, Martin Davidson, receiving nearly $600,000 per year in salary and benefits. Last Friday, the University of Florida eliminating all DEI positions on campus, reallocating the $5 million DEI budget to other areas. The announcement sparking praise and criticism. Former NFL player and Florida Gator Emmett Smith responding on X writing, I'm utterly disgusted by U.S. decision. Sports commentator Stephen A. Smith jumping in. When you talk about diversity, equity and inclusion, let's make sure we understand a couple of things that are incredibly imperative to bring up. How about history? What's wrong 
with diversity. UF complying with a state law signed nearly a year ago by Governor Ron DeSantis banning state schools from spending federal or state money on DEI initiatives. A VP and chief diversity officer at Johns Hopkins Medicine resigning this week after a controversial post on privilege. Dr. Sharita Golden apologized for the post. The hospital system plans to replace her. In Atlanta, a private equity group is being sued for a grant they only give to black female business owners. The lawsuit calls the program racially exclusionary. Recent polling shows a majority of Americans support workplace DEI initiatives, but opinions are deeply split along party lines. I'm Kayla Gaskins reporting. Covering the Capitol, House Republican leaders are realizing they're not in a position to force large spending cuts. Today's $460 billion bill is made up of six spending bills crammed into one, the kind of legislating conservatives promised to end once they took the majority. House Speaker Mike Johnson now knows that he's got little leverage and Democrats say they're happy with the result. We're not going to get everything that we want. We want to cut spending. We want to limit the size and scope of the federal government. The reality right now is we have divided government. They're, they're nowhere near the 22 percent cuts that the House Republicans had threatened. We are not going to be shutting government down. Government is going to be staying open as it should be. For Republicans, part of the problem is the deal that former House Speaker Kevin McCarthy cut with President Biden, which contained modest cuts. Johnson's been unable to get around that. Another problem is the GOP hardliners who have stuck to demands for big cuts despite having little leverage. And today was a cloudy day for us, and it's going to stay cloudy again for tomorrow. It's also going to get a little bit foggy tonight, and it looks like some areas may even be trying to see a little bit of that patchy fog develop. I think visibility is across some parts of Middle Tennessee might drop down to about two to three miles. And uh, around the plateau, it's going to be a little bit thicker, maybe even down to about half a mile or so. But overall, not too bad for us for tonight, otherwise a calm night. Temperatures right now here in Nashville, we are in the mid-50s. 55, that's our current temperature right here in Nashville. A wide view of radar still showing it nearly all dry conditions. Zooming in onto southern Kentucky and middle Tennessee. Radar still showing the dry conditions. We do have some of those clouds, though, that are a little bit lower. So when you're driving, it might look like it's raining a little bit. Just kind of that foggy mist in a few of those spots across portions of middle Tennessee. Still really nothing to cause you any sort of issues, though. But could see just a little bit of that mist. As we head through the rest of the overnight hours, it's just going to be more of the same. Some of that fog is going to remain in place. Patchy fog for portions of middle Tennessee. Dry conditions conditions though for us as we go through tomorrow not expecting really any rain chance for tomorrow very late tomorrow we might bring in a few showers that's really not going to be much to complain about though early Friday morning north of Interstate 40 up into southern Kentucky this is the seven o'clock picture for us tomorrow morning overall though a lot of areas still on the dry side once we hit the later part of the morning and early afternoon tomorrow areas south of I-40 are going to see a better chance for some of these showers some heavier rainfall down here in our southwestern spots south of I-40 into the west of Interstate 65 areas like Lawrenceburg, Columbia, uh, Camden going to see some of that heavier rainfall first. That's going to keep on pushing to the north as we head through the rest of the day. Friday 5 o'clock more of those showers moving north of I-40 up into southern Kentucky and then we're going to have some spotty kind of heavy showers we'll call it as we head through Friday night into Saturday morning. That's going to clear on out of here fairly quickly at least that first round. That's the 7 o'clock picture early Saturday morning and uh, we could see a few thunderstorms try to move through as well. Friday night into Saturday morning I think is the best time frame for that. The good Good news though, no severe weather expected as of right now, at least across Middle Tennessee or Southern Kentucky. That cold front's going to keep on pulling through. This is the noon picture on Saturday. Uh, showers, a better chance for those along into the east of Interstate 65. That's going to clear on out of our area fairly quickly, and then that's going to leave us with a drier day for the rest of Saturday on into Sunday. Not looking at much of a rain chance for the start of next week either. Air to the west and south of here with a better chance for that severe weather threat here in Middle Tennessee and Southern Kentucky really not going to have to deal with much of that. Rainfall amounts about an inch for most of Middle Tennessee up to that or so and then up to about an inch and a half or so in our far southeastern counties. That's Lincoln, Moore and Franklin. 52 degrees your overnight low temperature for tonight and then temperatures start to drop a little bit for the weekend. 63 Saturday we will be in the mid 50s on Sunday. This Fox 17 newscast is sponsored by the Nashville Predators.
Titan star running back Derrick Henry will officially become a free agent next week, and the King is making sure that everyone knows he's not slowing down anytime soon. Henry, known for his impressive stiff arms and thousand yard seasons, is also known for his insane off season workouts. Check it out. His trainer posting this video today on Instagram. Just another day in the gym for the 30 year old running back. Every single one of his exercises, some sort of dynamic movement, and every single one of those makes me tired just watching. Now, when Henry hits the open market next week, he won't be the only running back looking for a new home. He'll have to compete with a very crowded market and against some veteran talent as well. Saquon Barkley, Josh Jacobs, Austin Eckler, several others will also be free agents. Tennessee men's basketball team with a chance to win the SEC regular season title tonight. Vols haven't won it outright since 2008, and all they have to do? beat South Carolina and the title was theirs. Not always an easy thing to do, especially since the Gamecocks beat the Vols back in January. First half falls up five and star guard Dalton 14 points in the first half alone. Second half Gamecocks trying to work their way back. Colin Murray boils back and down finishes inside title outright. Vanderbilt Commodores at Rupp Arena tonight taking on guard Rob Dillham with his one of his best games of the season coming off the bench and dropping 23. Antonio Reeves added another 20 as Kentucky rolls past the doors 93 to 77. Now, even though Vandy does have one more game left, they've officially locked themselves into that number 13 spot for the SEC tournament. And that tournament takes place right here in Nashville next week at Bridgestone Arena starting on Wednesday. Jill Jonlick, Fox 17 Sports, your coach. Red Station. Is it allergies or is it something else? I'm Liz Bonus. A new study on our state in every district. Our Crisis in the Classroom series digs deeper into issues that are crippling our schools. Watch Crisis in the Classroom only on Fox 17 News. In health news, new research on chronic sinus problems could help people with allergies finally get the correct treatment. Fox 17 News uh, medical reporter Liz Bonus showing us how to separate the symptoms. Hey there, everybody. As upper respiratory symptoms continue to make us feel sick, this study found even though springtime can cause similar symptoms, don't assume it's just allergies. It could instead be a flare-up of what's called chronic rhinusitis, or CRS. People who have this frequently have allergies, but they're not the same thing. If you've been taking multiple allergy medications for years without relief, you might want to get a second sinus opinion to see if you have CRS. Dr. Ahmad Sedegat told me he's the director of the Division of Rhinology, Allergy and Interior Skull Base Surgery at Ohio's UC College of Medicine. His team published this study in the Journal of Otolaryngology Head and Neck Surgery. They found about half of those in the study who were diagnosed with allergies also had CRS. If you treat the allergies, you miss the chronic rhinosinusitis, the CRS, uh, and, and patients get undertreated. So how would I know if I have CRS? You did a study to help separate the symptoms. What are they? So we found that patients who had basically any kind of smell loss or patients who described their nasal symptoms like the blockage, the drainage, as at least moderate. There's also a relatively high likelihood that they may have chronic rhinosinusitis. Dr. Sedegat's team also found nearly half of those who have CRS never get the right treatment for it, intranasal corticosteroids. Some of these medications are prescribed for allergies. But for chronic rhinosinusitis, you really want to use intranasal steroids that get deeper into the nose, actually get into the sinuses. And sometimes that's more than just the typical over-the-counter steroid sprays that we see used for uh, allergic rhinitis. He says one other big finding in this study was that antihistamines don't work for CRS. He says if you've been taking these for allergies without success, ask your doctor for a referral to a sinus specialist. With your health news, I'm Liz Bonus reporting. Liz, thank you. Behind the scenes we've been talking about, <laughs> is it misting in West Nashville? Apparently there's reports.